Have you ever wanted to take the information that you have in HubSpot and share it with external third-party contractors or freelancers? Maybe you've contracted with a third-party business development team and you want to make sure that they have the right level of access and that they don't have to be HubSpot users. This is a perfect use case for using software with HubSpot. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com and we're a software and CRM implementation partner. If you haven't used software before, you can sign up using the affiliate link in the description below. The first thing you'll want to do once you get logged into software is click in the lower left-hand corner and add a new data source. From here, you can connect a data source and you'll want to choose from HubSpot, click continue, and then you'll be able to come to the screen where you can authenticate your own HubSpot account. Next, we'll want to create a new application and we're going to start from a blank application. This area that you see here is called Software Studio. It allows you to click on any of the components that you see. We call these blocks inside of Software and we can add our own blocks. So some of them are going to be static if you just want some information high level, you want to put some headers in there or you can do dynamic, which is going to actually pull from our data that we have in HubSpot to be able to show it to the users of your application. Let's go ahead and create a new page. I'm gonna click on pages here and we'll add a new one and we're going to call this one contacts. This is where they're going to see a list of the contacts that those business development representatives are going to contact. From here, let's add a table and next we'll wanna connect it to our data source. You can see that there's a number of different objects that we have from HubSpot that we can connect to. In this case, we're going to choose contacts. We can click Click on content and this is where we can update the actual fields that we have. So out of the box, it adds some fields, but it's not actually connected to our data yet. Here's where we can change the fields and the configuration here so that it all lines up. In this case, we do have an image field. This one, if we search for image, I've got a contact image here and that's going to map and pull that information across for that image. Let's map this text to the person's name, we'll do their full name. And then I've updated a couple other fields with their last activity date, as well as their company. If we scroll up to the top here, we can see different categories. These display across the top. We'll open this up and let's go ahead and filter this by the status, the lead status of these so that we could have people toggle between them. So you can see that now we have all categories and these are actually mapped to the different statuses that we have inside of HubSpot. Next, let's go ahead and add some users. We can do this by clicking on the users tab Tab, and this is where we're going to add a couple of people. This could be both our internal users at our company, as well as those ones that we're contracted with that work at a third party company. We have a couple different options to authenticate our users. A really easy one is to generate a magic link. That means that when this email goes out, that user can just click on a link and it automatically authenticates them. I've added a couple more users here. And one thing I want to show you back in HubSpot is that I added a custom property here that represents the third party owner of that lead that we're giving them. So in this case, we've got two different people. We've got John at chiliemails.com and Kelly at speedydials.net. Notice that these aren't actually HubSpot users. It's really just a text field and I'm putting in their email address because in software, we're going to use this to match up the user. We're gonna say, hey, here's the leads that they own, the contacts that they own, and here's what they're able to see inside of the software application. Now we can also create special user groups for our user and this manages who is able to see what inside of our application. So if we create a user group here, maybe we're gonna call this one BDR external. Let's go ahead and create that. We'll add our users here manually. And so we'll add both John and we'll add Kelly to this group. We'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll create one more here and we'll call this one uh, internal for our internal team members. And again, we'll add users, but this time this will just be me because I'm representing our organization here. The other thing we should do here is add some rules around who can actually see this page because we only want this to be available for our internal users so if I click on my pages and we can click on our settings here, click on visibility. This is where we're going to say this is only available to our logged in users. We don't want just random people off the street to see our information. So let's go ahead and save that. We can preview our application here. So notice if someone was a logged out user, they're not going to be able to see this contacts page at all. But then we can see, hey, if I am Dan, I'll say, don't show that again. If I am Dan and I'm logged in as an internal user, I have the option now to add a new record here. However, if I am, let's say Kelly, who works at that third party company, she can see those contacts, but can't actually add a new record. Now, presumably we want people to do a little bit more with this information than just view a list of records. So let's click on our actions again, 
And we're going to add an item button because we want them to open up each individual record to see more information and to log notes as they're contacting those leads. So let's add an item button. And for this one, we're going to open a details page. Now we haven't actually created that details page yet. So we're going to create a new one and we can choose this template that we have going on here. Okay. So this created this new page for us. I do want to change that a little bit. Let's just call this contact details uh, and change it. So it's not plural contact details. That'll work. And then just as we were able to map the different fields before on our list page, we can do the same thing when we're going through our details page as well. So we'll click on that content and here's where we have a bunch of different fields showing. Let's go through this and we can start to map this over in the same way by finding our HubSpot fields and mapping it to the appropriate softer fields. Okay, so now we've finished mapping a few fields so it'll be a little bit more filled out here. Let's go back to our contacts page and just make sure that this is set up the way we need it to with that button. So let's open up that action. We'll click on that item button again and here's where we're going to open up the details page. We'll be able to choose now from our contact details and we can say, should we open it in the same tab or a modal or a new tab? In this case, let's open it up in the same tab and then we can publish our changes. Now, when we see our contacts page, we see this little button here where we can open that record to explore further details. So let's open up this contact record and we can see now we have all of our fields. We've got that image. We've got this all mapped across, but presumably we want that team to be able to be dialing and emailing those leads that we have on our list. So we probably want to surface our notes or activities here to flesh this out a little bit more than just the contact information itself. Softer is really flexible when it comes to this. So let's add a new block here and we'll choose a list with horizontal cards. And then again, we're gonna map this. We're not gonna map it to the contacts table, but again, we'll choose our HubSpot data source here. And then instead of contacts, here's where we want to link it to any notes that we have. Let's click on our content. And here, there's not actually a lot of fields that we can map things to inside of our notes, but we'll take what we have. We're gonna turn off the image that we have here since there won't be an image for that. Let's see what we can map across. So we just have a handful of fields. We probably would want that activity date front and center so that we can view this in our list. And then we can go ahead and add our note body to this as well. And the rest of these we'll just delete because we don't really need to worry about the additional information for this since the contact record is owned by that individual person. If we want, we can always add titles and things of that nature. So we'll just call this notes and we'll display that in the center. I've turned off our categories. We'll just keep it nice and simple. And then the other thing that we'll want to do here is add some conditionality to what's displaying. So we don't want every single note in the system to display here. We only want to display the notes associated with that person's contact record. So here, if we click on source and scroll down to conditional filters, we can say, of this note, if the associated contact ID is, and then here's where we can choose from our current record. So we're on that contact record. And from the contact record, we wanna grab its record ID, and then we can go ahead and publish our changes. So if we check out our contacts again, and we open up Dan Lehman's contact information, because we have the conditional filtering set up, I can see this note because it's associated with his contact record. But if we head back and we open up a different contact record like Brian's, when we open it, because of that conditional filtering, we're not going to see that note because it's not actually associated with his contact record. Now, presumably, this is the same thing we want to do with our contacts is to add that conditional filtering. Because if I take a look at our list that we have, and we have this third party owner, Kelly owns two of the contacts, Dan and Brian, and John owns Maria. So we don't want them to cross over and see each other's contacts. We want to make sure they only see their own contacts that they own. So we can do this too. If we scroll down again and we see our conditions, this is where we can add the condition and say, if the third party owner is, and we can now map this to the logged in user's email. So if there's a match here between the third party owner that we're getting from HubSpot and the email address of the current logged in user, that's what they are able to see on screen. So we're logged in as Kelly up at the top, which is why we can only see those two contact records now. So that's how we can manage who's able to see which records and how they can perform which actions. So now anytime we add new contacts to our database, we can distribute those leads out without actually sharing access via HubSpot. We can do that instead with our softer app. I hope this has been helpful for you to see how we can build these kind of interfaces on top of softer to interact with our HubSpot data. If you haven't gotten started with softer, you can do so using the link in the description below.